Now, a bed. Bed is the form. The function of a bed is to rejuvenate and revitalize the body, to go to sleep. Well, the function of sleep is to rejuvenate and revitalize. Now, sleep does, you know, we do go through the activity of sleep and wake up more rejuvenated and re-energized, but sleep does not necessarily facilitate rejuvenation and revitalization. You know, I'm sure plenty of us can remember times where we've gotten, you know, eight, 10 hours of sleep, still woke up tired. <laughs> Why is that? Well, that's because sleep is not necessarily the sole determination of rejuvenation and revitalization. Energy, gaining more energy. The real thing that provides more energy and recycles the energy back into ourselves is learning from our life experiences, assimilation. So that's what a bed will represent is assimilation, you know, assimilating what happened, you know, processing what has occurred in your life and determining what you can learn from it and then applying that lesson that you've learned back into your life. That's assimilation. So that's what dreams are. That's why we dream when we're asleep. You know, more, the more you pay attention to your dreams and things, the more rejuvenated you're going to become. So the more, and even not even just dreams, you don't even have to do with dreams. The more you're just working at looking at your life, breaking it down, your experiences, and identifying what you have to learn, you know, through the experiences, you've sent out the energy. You've expelled that energy. Now, you return and recycle that energy by bringing it back to the self. The conscious mind. What did we talk about in week one? Well, let me pull that back up. The duty of the conscious mind is to create life experiences in order to learn from them. So you, the duty is it's aggressive. It's expelling the energy. Through our life experiences, we're, you know, we're giving out energy in order to have these life experiences. The receptive, how do we then receive the energy back? How do we recycle it? We feed those experiences and understandings to the subconscious mind. You, those understandings and things are the food that pulls into our body. I mean, so in, in life, what else, what else re-energizes us and gives us energy? Food. Food. We eat food to have energy to do the things that we need to do. So our metaphysically, our consciousness is the same way. So I said, the whole process of eating food in a dream. Actually, did we break that down? I don't know. If, if we did, if we didn't, I'm going to right now. And if we did, then this will be good because you'll get to ingrain it deeper into your consciousness. So food in a dream, our teeth break down our food, you know, physically, our teeth break down our food so that we can digest what's in it, so that we can digest the food. We can, it'll be easier to swallow. <laughs> and so you take a steak and you just try to swallow it. You got to chew on that. <laughs> you got to chew on it for a minute. So it's easier to swallow. Then once we swallow it, then it gets into the digestive system. We can digest what has what we, we have taken in. And through the digestive system, our body will first extract the parts of the food that it can use, the parts that it can make a permanent part of the body, the lungs, the tissue, the organs, the bones. And then the digestive system moves it further and lets go of the waste, the parts that are, aren't needed, the parts that are unnecessary, the parts that if we continue to hold them inside of our body, they will become toxic because we will become septic. If, we, if you continue to hold on to it, you do not let it go, you will become sick. If you continue to hold on to it even longer, you may even die. So that's what food is in our, in our physical body. I don't think I've really said anything about food so far that's new to anyone. <laughs> And so then how does that relate to the consciousness? Well, the function, how it relates to the consciousness is this process here, the duty and the purpose of the conscious mind. To take those life experiences, to break them down. You know, we're feeding them to the soul. So we break down the life experiences so that it's easier to swallow what's happening. It's easier to digest what has occurred. So when we do that, then we, it is, when we really break them down and accept 
what has happened. Okay, this has happened. This is what occurred. This is what was said. This is what was done. This is what was felt. Okay, what can I do with that? What can I, it's easier to look at and identify what we can learn. Now that it's broken down, the digestive system can pick out the parts that it can use. Okay, I can use this part. Okay, I can use this part. Okay, from this experience, I can learn this. I can learn that. Okay, I can learn this. And so once you do that, those understanding part of the self. Right here, I'm loving this. Become a permanent part of the self. Just like the nutrients become a permanent part of your body. This becomes a permanent part of yourself. Those understandings, you know, like I get people all the time, you know, I was more just I just came into this life understanding dreams. When I was a kid, I knew exactly how to just escape and dream if I didn't want to dream it. I knew exactly how to, you know, when I woke up, a lot of people talk tell me all the time about how, you know, oh man, you know, I had a dream this morning. I didn't want to get up. I just want to go back to the dream so bad. It sucks. And I would just always feel for them like, man, what you mean you don't just go back into that dream like next night? <laughs> what? Not everybody does this? You know, I just understood. Because I had those understandings. I did the work in past lifetimes. So I have these understandings. But that, that's me. You know, I have other understandings too. But I'm sure you can identify ways in which you were just always uniquely different and things that you understood that other people don't necessarily think in the same way. They don't necessarily operate naturally the same way. You know, so that's because you have made in the past life, you have learned those lessons, you built those understandings, and you made them yourself. So you have them available in the next lifetime. You know. The conscious mind here is new every lifetime. Once you die, this dies, and all the rest of this remains the same and forms a new conscious mind. Now you have a new, fresh conscious mind ready to be imprinted and programmed with new programming. But all this is the same. You still have that same source of wisdom. So every lifetime, you're just feeding more and more understandings. You know, next lifetime, feeding more and more understandings into the self. You're just amassing this large stockpile of just wisdom. And it's just getting bigger and bigger, growing more and more. And so you just have more and more wisdom to access. So it's just all about, you know, connecting with the subconscious mind in order to become more intuitive and more, um, you know, clairvoyant, clairaudient, and really bring more connected with yourself and bring more of those understandings to the forefront of your conscious mind. All right. And so once, so back to the process, once, once we learn the lessons and we feed those understandings back into ourselves, well, all the way to get back all the way to you know bed and assimilation. When we feed those understandings to our soul and store them into the subconscious mind, that is when we are recycling the energy back into ourselves. That is when we are rejuvenating and revitalizing because that energy that we have expelled is coming back into us. We are re vitalizing we are rejuvenating you know so the energy we expel through the experiences comes back into ourself through that process and once we do that then oftentimes it's through gratitude but other ways too we let go uh we're able to let go of the parts that are unproductive you know the actual experience itself you know what i mean like if 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 something happened and i lose my legs i become paraplegic that's going to suck. <laughs> but if through that, it causes me to understand just how strong I am, just how much I can overcome, just how powerful I can make other parts of myself, you know, my mind, oh my God, you know, it, all, all these other things that I can learn through that experience. You know, I mean, yeah, being fully able-bodied right now, hell no, I don't want to experience that. But even just laying it out that way, I can see how there would be value in that experience, you know, universal law of sacrifice. <laughs> I probably won't be able to experience those things because I won't be stimulated to do, to put in as much effort as I would if I was paraplegic. So I'm sacrificing being able to go to that level of depth <laughs> through that that experience would afford, but I'm able to be fully able-bodied. So I'd rather take that sacrifice, you know, personally. But who knows, as a soul, I might choose that and just, you know, Come in the next lifetime crippled. 
<laughs> and, then I, and then I can do that. But what I'm saying is when you actually learn those lessons and things, then you can become more grateful for the fact that you have that because you went through that. And so it's a lot easier, you know, so if that was me, you know, four years down the road, I'm completely transformed into a totally different person that I wouldn't have been able to become if I didn't, you know, have whatever accident caused me to be paraplegic. So then I can just let go of the, the fact that I, you know, I'm not, I don't know what longer need to hold on to that, regret that and, you know, be disgruntled about it and, you know, and, and um, you know, things like that. I can let it go. It's a lot easier to let it go once once you learn those lessons because just like you know with one of the bathroom if you don't let it go if you don't let it go it's going to become toxic and become toxifying to your body it's going to become toxifying to your mind your thoughts and emotions and, and so much so that you become sick or even further you still don't let it go until you you know die consciously so transform you know but Likely, you probably aren't transforming into a higher something higher, but something that downward spiral. You're going down downward spiral. You hold on to that toxic thing. Now we can better understand how the bed represents assimilation. Because if that if that whole learning from our life experiences process is how we rejuvenate and revitalize, then we can even further understand the value of our dreams because that's what our dreams are doing for us. Our dreams, when we understand this language, are giving us a way to identify how we've been using our mind the previous day or two. We can become more self-aware of what lessons can be learned, what obstacle, how to overcome the obstacles within our life experience, how we can grow and learn those lessons. It's like laid out in plain sight within our dreams for us. So when we go to sleep at night and dream, it's not just the sleeping, it's, it's the dreaming, working with your dreams that makes sleep so valuable to your revitalization. And so that's why a bed in a dream will represent assimilation. And if you're someone who's working with your dreams, then any time a bed come, comes up in your dream, like 70 to 90% of the time, it's going to be talking specifically about dream work. 